Ready. Yeah, obviously uh, a disappointing uh, result uh, in New York City. Uh, it was actually a, a good performance from the group. We put a lot into the game. Uh, disappointing to come up on the uh, wrong end and drop points. Uh, everyone's upset with the get conceding restarts. Did a good job on on in what my opinion in my opinion is the best uh, passing team in our league. Uh, unfortunately. They and uh, it's a disservice that they have to play on uh, such a tight field with, with such a, a talented roster uh, and, and have a great style of play and, and way of playing. Uh, I think it hinders them uh, in, in some ways. Uh, but for the most part in the run of play, did a really good job defending them, uh, but came up short uh, on the corner kicks. And we could break down those for a while. But at the end of the day, it just becomes about competing, winning your individual battle. Uh, we, we didn't do a good job. Uh, you know, we've talked through that already. Uh, we have a week now, uh, a week and a half to, to prepare for, for Harrisburg. Uh, and this week before the build up to Harrisburg uh, has been for the first time of the year, I told the players it's a, it becomes about the individual. What can you do better uh, yourself to improve? Uh, you know, for example, with El Sino, we've worked a lot this week individually on him turning more in the hole, being a little more aggressive, getting shots off and playing final balls. Uh, for uh, our outside backs, it's the defending crosses and, and blocking crosses, uh, just individually, they can focus on a lot of little things. Uh, for our strikers, it's lots of reps in front of goal. Uh, all those little things that you can work to improve on, and then naturally comes a, a time where you can work on your fitness. You know, Are you 90 minutes fit, whether that's when you're playing for the steel, uh, for us, uh, internationally, when you're coming back from breaks, where are you at fitness-wise? So a lot of little things that have been worked on this week, which has been real positive. Uh, we know we have an opponent in, in Harrisburg that we uh, uh, will just say know very well from the Open Cup. Uh, it's the, the dream matchup everyone's been looking for. Oh, that was uh, sarcasm because we play them every year. Um, you wish the Open Cup would be a little more open and you could have a little more uh, change in the opponents. Uh, we already know now if we win this one, we'll probably play New York Red Bull again or NYCFC. So it does lose a little uh, luster, I'm sure. Harrisburg feels the same way. They're probably tired of playing us. Uh, in some ways, you'd almost rather go to Reno, Nevada and do something different, but uh, it is what it is. These are the rules. This is the way the tournament's constructed. Uh, and now we have uh, to prepare for them on Wednesday. Uh, a good team, a tough opponent, uh, one that'll come in here and try to get a win. Uh, we'll field a, a very strong roster. You know, We'll see where guys are at uh, physically, and we'll put a team on the field to, to win the game. We treat the Open Cup very serious. Uh, and, and we look forward to that game and then obviously uh, reviewing and getting back to league play and knowing that we have uh, Red Bull, DC, and New England all coming into our building. We have to do a good job protecting home field. Any questions for Jim? Jim, what did you see out of Derek and Austin? Yeah, I, th I thought they had really good, uh, a really good competition. Obviously, Derek was called upon uh, more frequently. Uh, had a great tournament, uh, did really well. Uh, I have a voicemail from Tab and, and he's I have to get back in touch with them now, but uh, just to, he had very positive things to say about them on the message that I received. Uh, happy with their, their work rate, uh, their fitness, their contributions to the team on and off the field, excellent. Uh, so really happy with them. You know, I know Derek turned a lot of heads, uh, both uh, in our country and, and abroad. Uh, anytime you're on a big stage like that, it's, uh, it, it's important to, to show well. I think they represented the Philadelphia Union in a very positive manner. You know, it's great for Austin to get the experience of scoring a goal in that competition, uh, that feeling. So really happy with what both of them uh, were able to accomplish. And in, in terms of uh, we want to be a team that now produces players for our national team, produces international players. And, you know, uh, credit to, to Ernie and, and to Chris. If you look at our roster now from uh, last year, last year I believe we had one international and uh, in, in Andre. Uh, and this year now, and, and Warren, I would say, I forgot Warren as well, but now you look at our roster and between the youth uh, internationals and now between the first team internationals, uh, you have, uh, I count by my count, about 10 guys. So I think it's 10 is the number that I came up with, which is a significant increase. Uh, and with that now, uh, we have a very strong group and we have uh, depth in our team that we're confident in guys when we do, they do go away on international duty. The international spots for the Open Cup. How do you guys? Manage yeah, that? it's tricky. Uh, you know, you get five, so you know, we have to manage it in a smart way. Um, there could be some news on some some positive uh, green card situations. Uh, 
and again, I've, I've, we've talked about this, I think, a lot last year, and we've covered it. Uh, it, it in the Open Cup, it can come up where it, you can make a decision tough, but it, it will never uh, hinder anything with the with the first team roster and the, the nine slots and different ways you can uh, get around things and, and, and with green cards and with you know loaning players. So there's there's different mechanisms for that. But uh, in terms of the Open Cup, yeah, we do have to look at it with it only being five, but we've, we've kind of added up our 18 already, and we, we should be good to go without any uh, real restrictions where we're dropping a guy that we really wanted to be involved in the game. When you talk about that regional nature of the Open Cup, I mean, I yeah. guess a team like Reading just can't fly out to Portland, right? Yeah, is there, is yeah. Is there a better way to there's do a, it? With? There's a business. That, I get it. There, you know, there is the, the financial side to it, um, you know, but it's just it's just redundant you know it, it becomes a, a situation where it's not exciting for the fans uh, it's, it's it's the same thing and it's almost before the competition even starts you almost know it's it's like a schedule almost you know so um, it loses a little bit of pizzazz in that I don't think it's on TV like you'd like it to be um, and it's there's listen there's still only two trophies in our country uh, that you can lift and uh, I know US soccer has a, a lot of uh, responsibilities and, and focus on different things, but uh, you would like to get it to a point where you know the, the matchups weren't so you know the same over and over. And I'm sure Harrisburg feels the same way. You know, it, uh, yes, it can be regional, but maybe could we play a team from you know a, a, a slightly different part of the, the region? I, I still think you can keep it regional, but the matchup seems so selected already. You know, so that, that part's. And just lose a little buzz for the fans, I think. It's tough. Jim, uh, Derek uh, obviously played in, in the World Cup, but hasn't played in MLS in a while. Yeah. Do, you, do you look at the Open Cup as like he's a prime type of guy to kind of maybe get some experience there? Yeah, I mean, listen, he's he's done great in every situation he's been been put on the field for us, whether it was as a starter and in closing out games. So Derek is, has grown uh, and taken big steps now this year in his development. Uh, obviously, going to an international competition and, and impacting those games is, is special. Uh, you know, we'll have to look at it with Harris being away, uh, with Ali playing some international games, what's the best pairing in there. Uh, but, you know, Derek's a guy that we're confident in, uh, in that eight role, in that number six role, uh, like you saw him play for the U.S. So, um, yeah, he'll, he'll play a, a role for sure uh, in, in this Open Cup game. That is a, a certainty, uh, whether that's as a starter or a reserve, still to be determined. But. Uh, He's fit, you know what I mean? He's, he's gotten games, he's gotten his 90 minutes, so there's no concern in that regard. And uh, really happy with where he's at, and now he's got to be hungry and, and continue to, uh, you know, put his foot on the gas now and keep going and not have a, a lull or a letdown after an international competition. So really keep pushing forward, and, and I'm confident he will. Um, be before you had the steal, there was always a thing, worry about getting guys minutes. Right. Now, now that you have that, is that lesson with the Open Cup as far as, you know? Yeah, in, as far as our fitness, you mean? Or it, just, it just wanting to get playing guys time. minutes? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It does change things uh, because you're seeing them on a more regular basis, whereas I think in previous years there was almost a, it was a, a question, you know, let, let's give this guy a game and see what the heck he's all about. Uh, the, the Bethlehem Steel games give us a real barometer because they are playing against, you know, former MLS guys, guys that are, are really strong players, are playing in, in bigger crowds in certain cities. Uh, so again, it's uh, it's given us a lot of answers that maybe we previously didn't get. Uh, and, and yeah, I can't stress the importance of Bethlehem and how it's kind of bridged that gap and, and given us a spot to give guys minutes, old or young, you know, uh, even, you know, guys that have gone there and. Uh, and played minutes for us, uh, it, it lets us know exactly where their bodies are at, how fit they are, and it's been a, a real tool. But it does kind of eliminate the, gee, I wonder what he's going to look like, let's give him a shot in the Open Cup. Uh, it's pretty clear uh, how they've performed in, in Bethlehem uh, tells us a lot. Jim, I know this may be a little premature, we're yeah. still a couple months away, but has there been discussion about when Andre may go and what its status may be? The yeah, so you know, depending on uh, the final final roster, so when they come out, all the all the stuff's preliminary at this point. You'd assume Andre would be on their uh, in their group. It comes down to depending on their group and if they can get out of their group, uh, three to four games. Uh, so uh, and depending how we release them, 
uh, how early you release them. Do you release them to play in a, a friendly before the uh, the Gold Cup? With the goalkeeper, can be a little different. I think I'd argue it's just as valuable for him to play uh, against Kansas City, you know, uh, going into uh, the competition. So, uh, still some things to be ironed out, but you, you can expect. I'd imagine Andre is going to be part of Jamaica's plans, and and you'll miss him for a few games. But uh, and Johnny uh, McCarthy. Uh, and Jake, uh, they, they've both done really good, and then there's a decision to be made there. Uh, and we'll talk with Oka, and we'll sit down and make a decision, and then uh, we're confident in, in both of those guys. But yeah, it's, it's highly likely that you know we'll, we'll miss Andre for a few games. Any uh, update on Booch or Paul? And there's a couple other guys that I missed. Yeah, uh, Warren's again the, the game. I, I, I keep wanting to stop talking about it, but it keeps coming back up. And, and you know, to lose Gooch. And a kind of a fluky one where his eye swells to the point where it's shut. He did uh, clear concussion protocol on the field. Afterwards, had some symptoms uh, of a headache. Uh, so uh, he's we're being cautious with him right now. Still has to clear uh, some tests before he's fully released to train again. But it's he seems fine. He was out today. Just couldn't have have any uh, contact or head the ball. Um, you know, bad black eye for sure. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that thing is. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> we'll just say that. Uh, to lose him was difficult in the game. Uh, the big one also is Warren, who was doing a great job protecting our back four. Little hamstring tweak. It's in the, the, the meat of the hamstring and the center part of the hamstring, and it's great. It's great one, so it's not a, uh, a bad one. They said he's already bouncing back a lot quicker than they thought, so probably a couple more days on that one. Um, could be close for Wednesday. I think he'll be available for selection on Sunday. Um, but yeah, that hurt to lose him at that moment, not a sub we wanted to make. Uh, and El Sino in a game where uh, we really needed him for 90, uh, he started to, to cramp towards the end um, because he did put a ton of work in defensively uh, and a lot of change of direction on that small field. I know it, people would think that you don't have to cover as much ground on the small field, but the change of directions are, are ramped up a great deal. And uh, it was a warmer day uh, in the afternoon and he started to, to cramp towards the end so that we, we lost him. So tough changes, not changes you want to make, uh, but injuries happen. Uh, I think uh, if you go by Gooch and, and Warren, both of them won't miss any significant time, which is good. Did Gooch have to go through concussion protocol? On the field he did and he cleared all the things uh, there and that's always a quick scramble uh, and the, the doctors judge him there. Uh, got off the field and and when I say symptoms, I was, he had a headache, you know. So again, they're they're cautious now, and, and they want to take him through all the tests. Um, it's not surprising he had a headache. He had a, his eye was literally shut like a boxer, and, a, and he chipped a tooth also in, in, in the play. So uh, he's in pain. He was in pain. So uh, he went through the, the protocol now and, and has to uh, pass some tests before he's officially allowed to play in a, in a, in a game for us. Danny Barbud is out here training with you guys. Yeah, a yeah. Danny's out here. Uh, you know, obviously was released from from West Brom just a thing where he's trying to stay in shape um, a player that you know you guys have seen around here and in, in around the team a bunch um, good young player um, but at the same time at this time it's just strictly to to train to train and, and keep fitness Roster, rosters for the most part full especially at the, the center back spot you uh, mentioned Bethlehem Steel earlier Do you yeah foresee any of those guys coming up to help out in the open cup yeah, um, you know, we, we submitted our roster. You know, we've seen uh, some really good performances from a lot of their guys, happy with a lot of their guys. Um, but at this time, uh, our roster that we submitted is our, is our MLS roster. Um, so we will stick with that group. Um, you know, as good as a lot of them have been performing, uh, you know, Aseku Kane comes to mind. Uh, you know, they've had good seasons, but at the same time, is it enough for them to just surpass some of our guys that are on our roster? I don't think that's the right thing uh, at this time. Um, we're fairly healthy now, which is also lucky. So um, we will see uh, our group that uh, has been submitted for the U.S. Open Cup is our, our roster of, of 30 players. Is, is Fabian still a couple of weeks away? Yeah, sorry, yeah, Fabian was one I forgot. Uh, had a, an injection, uh, probably another five or six days before he's back training, and then from there, just the regaining of fitness. So not not significant, uh, but you know, with these busy schedule coming up, we would like to get him back as, as quickly as possible. Some of the other guys that weren't out here look like Pontius and Sapong. Yeah, is Pontius is fine. He, he mm -hmm. trained uh, yesterday, trained hard, and just kind of, we'll call it overall soreness, you know, just a, a day, a pro day for a, an older guy. But uh, yeah, no, he's, he's doing well. He trained really hard yesterday. We had a tough day yesterday working on a lot of individual things and um, 
just wasn't feeling great this morning, so nothing, nothing. Okay. And when you when you watched the film from New York, was there any yeah. overriding takeaway from the set piece goals? Yeah, well, on the day in term, we could have been better with the ball. It wasn't a day where we had a lot of we, we actually had no eight pass sequences, you know, which is something that we've kind of done a good job in recent weeks of doing. Um, our pressure to the ball overall was pretty good, um, and. and yeah, David V on a different day could bury one of those chances, but we dodged a bullet and you know played some percentages and took some things away from them. Uh, but yeah, to the, to do it on set pieces now. Uh, oh, how long do I want to make this? Well, let me ask you. This. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, when you guys set up Ray or the near side yeah. feedback is on the post. Yeah, we always. So we always we are always uh, a team that believes and the data supports it that two men on the post, right? But. In late game situations now where two guys are on the ball, our near post guy, because Andre prefers uh, to have the back post covered, is instructed to come off and deal with the short. So if you see that one, it's Matarita and, uh, and Morales. And the last thing you want is them going two against one with no one out there and then they score and then we're going, why the heck do we not have? Yeah, you had someone on the post, but they scored a different way. So yeah. it's a little bit of percentages, a little bit of, uh, but the data does support and all the studies they've done, two men on the post, um, it's amazing that that many teams in the world now and even in our league uh, put no one on the post. Uh, in that situation though, they throw, they throw they're throw they in a 3-5-2 at this stage and they throw everybody forward. Uh, and we, Fabi comes off, uh, deals with someone to mark and Ray goes to the short. Uh, if you even rewind it further, Josh could have done better to not concede the corner. Uh, he doesn't see, and I talked with him, he, he doesn't see a Coley. Uh, he just sees Matarita out of the corner of his eye and he thinks the ball's going out and he doesn't take a, uh, a glance at a Coley who makes a great play uh, to kick it off him. But it's one of those ones as a center back, if you literally just stop at that point, they have to run through you uh, or the ball, it impedes them enough to where they slow down and the ball goes out of bounds. But it's one of those bang, bang plays. Now it leads to a corner and there goes the momentum. Boom, off, the, off of that, Richie loses his guy, um, lets him get in front of him. Could, we could have done a million things better in that regard, but uh, yeah, overall we we are a team that wants guys on the front and back post. But in late game situations now, where 10, 10 field players are thrown forward and it becomes a scramble, uh, especially for short rays instructed to come off. The second one is the one that bothers me most. The first one you go, okay, Chanel heads it well. You know what I mean? He gets a a good header. Richie shouldn't let him get that free, certainly, and it, and it goes in that near post area. But the second one. When you look at it, you know, uh, you have Fafa's not where he's supposed to be. Uh, he's a guy who, again, when you watch the tape over, he, he just ran and, and was the one who worked his tail off to block the cross. So he's a little fatigued. Maybe the brain goes a little bit. Uh, Fabi shouldn't come off the post at that stage. Ray comes off in the right moment, but isn't close enough for the initial guy that it goes to. There's kind of a clump. It leads to the back. Ray's not close enough. I think if he challenges him there for that, play is probably over. In the miss, in the mess, you know, CJ slips and loses Callens. Uh, a ball bounces a little lucky for them. You know, we have an instance where now, I think if Fabi had stayed on the post, and when it goes back for that second uh, ball, uh, because that's when New York scores most of their corners, is on these second secondary kind of chances. Uh, he's in a good spot to clear it. Harris doesn't do great on either goal. He could. He could jump for the first one and maybe get at least disrupt Chano. And the second one, after it goes over him, he kind of breaks out to maybe start a counter before the job is done of clearing the ball. So again, I just named probably seven things and it's a team uh, effort in that regard. But the second one is the one I have the most problem with because it was kind of a little bit of a scramble. And I think that the-, the There were opportunities to clear. Yes, and we just kind of didn't. Uh, and, and our. Our dealing with the first one is right in that Ray should go. The second one, we're, we're not decisive in, in, in our plan of how we defend corner kicks, so that one was harder. Jim, uh, I think Saturday was your 100th MLS game in charge, regular season game. Yeah, um, who cares? Well, <laughs> your, your, your thoughts? <laughs> On 100 games? Yeah, uh, yeah that's that's fine. I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah, it means it's been, I've been here for 100 games, which is something, I guess. But uh, yeah, at the same time, uh, I, I believe in the, the work that we're doing. I think we are moving things uh, in the right direction. And, and uh, yeah, it's a, a milestone, but at the same time, the individual stuff is anything that I get too excited about, that's for sure. Um, you know, wish we could have uh, gotten a result on the road for our fans uh, against New York City uh, FC, who is, again, a, a very good team in our league. And, and I thought we 
disappointed for the players because they put enough into the game to, to get something out of it and when we walk away empty handed. It is a good time to get a break, regroup, and now uh, push towards the, uh, not quite the midway point, but the second part of the year. There's uh, there's nine active coaches who have 100 wins or, or 100 games played and Greg Vanny will be there soon. Yeah. MLS is in a league that's always been known for keeping coaches around for yeah, a very long time. That's... Does it seem like this, this group, and the commonality is that I think they're all former players in this league, do you see this group as having more stability because of the familiarity with the league? Uh, you know, uh, first of all, it's in, in pro soccer, um, probably more so in other countries, certainly Central and South America, <laughs> there's a heck of a lot more turnover. You know, three and four, five, six coaches a year. You can talk to Jay Simpson about his experience in the championship. Yeah, I think he had seven managers in the season before. So uh, there's not a lot of stability sometimes in the league. Uh, you know, the one thing you would say is you could go through each guy, you know, and whether it's you know, a Caleb Porter, a Greg Vanny, myself, Benny Olsen, whoever. We've all been, Greg Berhalter, we've all been through these moments now uh, of decent stretches, of, of tough times where, you know, you almost have moments where it could be the end and, and people discuss that. Uh, but we've kind of come through it and then we've learned from it and we kind of continue to grow. So uh, I think it's important uh, to never get too high or too low. Uh, are we as good as the times we make it to finals or are we as bad as the times where it's a tough stretch? Probably somewhere in between, you know, and I think that, that uh, there's more stability now maybe in the league. I think that's fair to say, uh, but at the same time, it's a pressure, high pressure job. It's pro sports and at the end of the day, uh, you're judged on getting to the playoffs, winning trophies and, and uh, you know, our, our, yeah, it's, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's pro sports. So again, there's going to be turnovers, going to be change. Uh, but, yeah, those are peers of mine, so it is a little, it's good to see that, that there are guys in the, in the league that you played with that are learning, uh, growing each and every year and doing good work. Thanks, Jim.